So today we're going to look at what happens when you have fraction underneath a square root and then something we call rationalizing the denominator, how to do this. We have fractions underneath the square root. It's like division underneath the square root, okay? Remember, one of the properties was whenever you have multiplication underneath the square root, you can break it up into individual multiplication parts. The same thing is true for uh, division. That w we have a rule that we can break up the division into multiple square roots. So the square root is of 10 divided by 3 is the same thing as the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 3. Okay? But one other rule is that we don't want square roots in the denominator. Okay? So what we're going to do is we call it rationalizing the denominator. We're going to get rid of this square root in the denominator without changing the type of problem it is. And what, how we rationalize the denominator is we always multiply it by the denominator over itself. We all, to rationalize the denominator, we always multiply by the denominator over itself. Which, if you multiply by something over itself, what are you really multiplying by? What would that simplify? One, right? Anything divided by itself is one. So all I'm doing to this problem is I'm multiplying by one, and anything times one is still itself. But this is going to help me get rid of the square root in the denominator. So let's simplify the top part. Square root of 10 times square root of 3 is going to be square root of 30. 30. You just multiply what's underneath. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is going to be the square root of 9, nine right? Because 9 is a perfect square itself, which is going to become square root of 9, three. just 3, right? And now I have the square root gone in the denominator. This is called rationalizing the denominator. Whenever you have a square root in the denominator, you want to get rid of it. And the way you do that is you multiply by the denominator over itself. That's going to give you a perfect square here, which then gets rid of the square root. And this would be the simplified answer to square root of 10 thirds. Okay? That makes sense? Let's look at another one like that. So you have this uh, square root of 12 fifths. And I want to simplify this square root. Square root of 12 fifths. One of the properties says if it's you have division under the square root symbol, you can break it up into multiple square roots. And the only problem with this is we have a square root in the denominator. Okay. So to get rid of the square root in the denominator, we call it rationalize the denominator. We always multiply by the denominator divided by itself. We, we rationalize it, we multiply it by the denominator over itself. The top part is going to be square root of 60, 12 times 5. The bottom part is going to be square root of 25, which itself is 5, right? Does that make sense? And what you'll start to notice is that anytime you take a square root times itself, you're always going to get that number without the square root. If I took square root of 7 times square root of 7, that would be equal to 7. If I took square root of 1,000 times square root of 1,000, it would be equal to 1,000 without the square root. Okay. I'm not quite done here, though. Why am I not quite? I have the square root gone to the denominator, which is good, but why are you not quite done otherwise? I'm okay with the 5 here, but the 60, we can simplify this just like we did before, right? The square root of 60. Let's just do that separately. I know the square root of 60 if I want to start thinking of the biggest perfect square that decides divides 60, I can. A lot of you like to factor it. So let's say you do that this way. I have a pair of twos. So a two is going to come outside the square root, right? What's going to stay in? The f a five and a three, so that gets remultiplied back together. That's 15. And it still has a denominator of five. So this would be the simplified answer to the square root of 12 fifths. Combining what we did last time. I rationalize the denominator. I get rid of the square root of the denominator. And then I have to simplify the square root of 60. Okay. And we do that. That becomes 2 radical 15. Try this one. Simplify the square root of 1 sixth. Simplify the square root of 1 sixth. So we have a rule that says the square root of a division, you can break it up into multiple square roots. We don't want square roots in the denominator, though. So how we get rid of that is we rationalize it, we multiply by the denominator over itself. 
Multiply the top two things together, that's going to become square root of 6. Multiply the bottom two things together, it's going to become square root of 36, which itself is 6. Can I simplify square root of 6 any further? No, right? There's no perfect square that goes into 6. So, this would be my final answer. Let's add a variable to it. Let's say I want the square root of 2n divided by 6. Same process, there's just a variable there. This can be split up into the square root of 2n divided by the square root of 6. That's just a rule we have. Anytime there's division under the square root symbol, you can break it up into multiple square roots. I want to get rid of the square root in the denominator, so how I do that is I rationalize it. I multiply by the denominator over itself. Multiply the top two things together, 2n times 6. Those are going to stay underneath the square root, just going to be 12n. Right? Square root of 6 times square root of 6, square root of 36, which itself is 6. Okay. I'm almost done here. I've got rid of the square root in the denominator, which is good, but I can simplify this 12n, square root of 12n further, right? This is like you did last time. If I want to simplify square root of 12n, the biggest perfect square that goes into 12 is 4, but a lot of you are factoring, which is fine. So I have a pair of 2s. The n doesn't have a pair, so it's going to stay in. A 2 comes out, square root of 3n is going to stay in, right? And it's still divided by 6. Don't forget that's divided by 6. One last little thing you can do here is if you just kind of ignore the 3n right now, you can simplify 2, 6, right? 2, 6 simplifies to what? You with me? If you, just, if you just look at that fraction, 2, 6, simplifies to what? One third, right? Because both those are divisible by two. So this could simplify to one square root of three n over three, which you don't even need to really write the one there, because one times the square root is the same thing as just the square root. But that's as far as we can take it simplifying. Okay. Okay. Let's try this. I want to simplify the square root of 12 divided by x squared. Simplify 12 divided by x squared, square root of it. Same thing, I can break up the square roots. I want to get rid of the square root in the denominator so I can multiply by square root of x squared over square root of x squared. But if this is a perfect square, I could just simplify it anyway. Meaning, does x squared have a square root? It's just x, right? Because if you simplify this, you could pull out an x. So actually with this one, square root of 12, I'll just leave. This is going to become x. I now have got rid of the square root in the denominator. I could have rationalized it. I could have multiplied by square root of x squared over square root of x squared like we did before. It would have just did more, been more work. This is easier because it has a square root. I could break it down, partner with my x's, and x comes out. Not quite done yet, though, because what can I do at this point? Simplify the square root of 12. It's not a perfect square, right? But I could simplify the square root of 12. Breaks down to 4 and 3, 2 and 2. So a 2 would come out, a 3 would stay in. So it would be 2 radical 3 <coughs> over x. So if the bottom is like a perfect square, you can you can just go ahead and simplify it. Right. If this would have been 100 to start with, I just would have made that 10. You could still rationalize it, but it's just a lot more work. Good question. Very good question. Let's say, let's back this problem up and look at that. If you would have had x to the third in the denominator, it's going to become square root of 12 over square root of x to the third x to the third itself doesn't have a square root, right? If you were to simplify this, 
it would be x square root of x, which doesn't help me because I still have a square root in the denominator, right? So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and rationalize it. I'm going to multiply by the denominator over itself. We always multiply by the denominator over itself. So the top part's going to become square root of 12x to the third. The bottom part is going to become square root of x to the what? What is x to the third times x to the third? Nine. Times. How many total x's are you multiplying if you have x to the third? It's six. six. x to the sixth, right? You have three x's being multiplied by three x's. Now, this should be a perfect square. The square root of x to the sixth, if you want to look at it this way, you have six x's being multiplied. Pair there, pair there, pair there. So how many are coming out? Three. So you're left with 12x to the third over x to the third. But then again, now we need to simplify this numerator. So if I have the square root of 12x to the third, I want to simplify that just like we did on the previous day. I can break that up the multiplication. Square root of 12 is going to become 2 radical 3. x to the third is going to become x radical x. So this is 2x square root of 3x over x to the third. I just simplified this to this. Okay. This is a more complex example, but it's a good, good one to go over. We could simplify these x's, but we won't worry about that right now. We'll come to that later. Okay. All right. Last example for today. Say so you had this. Last one I want to cover today. Square root of three-fourths times square root of one-third. When you multiply fractions, how do you multiply fractions together if it was just normal fractions? <coughs> multiply. That's when you add and subtract. When you, when you multiply fractions, that's when you try to get rid of a fraction in front of a variable. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across, right? You multiply the numerators together, you multiply the denominators together. So this is going to be square root of three-twelfths. I just multiplied 3 times 1, that's my numerator. Multiplied 4 times 3, that's my denominator. And now all I have to do is simplify this. This is going to be the same thing as square root of 3 over square root of 12. How do I get rid of the square root of 12 in the denominator? Yeah, I rationalize it. I multiply by square root of 12 over itself. This is going to become square root of 36. Right? The denominator is going to become square root of 144, which actually it works out that both of these are perfect squares, right? What is the square root of 36? 6. 6. What is the square root of 144? 12. 6 twelfths reduced to 1 half. So the answer to the square root of 3 fourths times the square root of 1 third would be 1 half. I simplified that square root as far as I could.